the horrible story of the famed K2 vegan mountain climbing adventure. Unveiling the unforgiving beauty, Cerro Torre, the mountain of triumphs, and the tragedies. In the realm of towering peaks, one stands apart, holding the notorious title of the biggest human killing mountain ever known to man, Cerro Torre. Its treacherous nature has left countless adventurers awestruck and claimed lives with a relentless grip. Yet, amid its perilous reputation, tales of awe-inspiring victories and astonishing accomplishments echo through its icy slopes. Among the realm of fearless climbers, one name resonates with both reverence and curiosity, Atanas Skatov. Renowned as the famed vegan climber, he dared to conquer the legendary K2, a testament to his extraordinary skill and unwavering determination. But in the realm of mountaineering, triumphs often intertwine with heart-wrenching tragedies. On a fateful day, January 16, 2021, a team of audacious Nepali climbers set out to conquer Cerro Torre, braving brutal weather conditions. Against all odds, they achieved the unthinkable, etching their names in history. However, destiny took a dark turn merely three weeks later when three climbers, including Athanas Skatov, mysteriously vanished, leaving behind a haunting tale of courage and uncertainty. Athanas Skatov, a man blessed with a myriad of exceptional qualities, emerges as an enigma, a passionate economist, a captivating speaker, and a devoted advocate of alternative lifestyles. Join us as we delve into the gripping chronicle of his extraordinary journey. But before we embark, don't forget to show your support by liking and sharing our videos. And remember, the notification bell must ring true, for there are more tales to be unveiled. Without any further ado, let the Odyssey commence as we uncover the life and legacy of Atana Skatov, born on March 11, 1978. In 2001, he graduated from the Agricultural University in Plodiv, Bulgaria, and held a master's degree. In 2004, he was a full-time PhD student. Skatov said he had never been on a mountain until 2010, and before 2012, he had never been an active sports person. Without passing even a basic mountaineering or climbing training program, he became the first known person in the world on a vegan diet to climb the highest summits on six of the continents in less than two years, climbing four 8,000ers in a week apiece. He is the first Bulgarian mountaineer to take part in four expeditions to climb 8,000ers in a single season. Skatov became a vegan in January 2012 and decided to test this kind of diet by climbing the highest summits of each continent in the world in 2015. Skatov was awarded an honorary citizen, K2 at 8,611 meters above sea level. Indeed, K2 is the second highest mountain on Earth after only Mount Everest. Seven summit treks, a trekking company leading the expedition. One group has become the first group to successfully scale it during winter, braving dangerously thin air and temperatures minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. On February 4, 2021, a great hero and climber, Atana Skatov, set age 42. And other missing climbers, Muhammad Ali Sadpara, 45 years old, from Pakistan, Johan Snorri, 47 years old, from Iceland, and Juan Pablo Moher, 33 years old, from Chile. Skatov is the second climber to die on K2 slopes this season after a Spanish mountaineer fell to his death the month before. Bulgarian National Radio cited the Nepalese organizer of the expedition as saying that Skatov is believed to have fallen while changing ropes during a descent to base camp. The radio report said Skatov fell from an altitude of about 7,400 meters. His body was found at about 5,500 meters and flown to the nearby city of Skardu, the report said. There were over 25 people at high camp, three on the night of February 4th. Climbers were forced to pile into tents like sardines in a can and were supposed to be there with them, camped out in their own personal tent that was carried at the time. As fate would have it, there was a serious oxygen mismanagement problem and the oxygen that was purchased was not where it was supposed to be. There was confusion about a simple transaction that was made. They purchased six bottles of oxygen that were all supposed to be in one place. 100% reliant on supplemental oxygen, they knew they were dead without it if they were to continue higher up to proper Camp 3. They descended to Japanese Camp 3 and pitched a tent for the night in the brutal minus 35 degrees Celsius temperatures. The stoves barely functioned to melt ice, and the only salvation was the warmth produced by three men huddled together. They were upset about their oxygen, but experienced and level-headed enough to know that nothing could be done. The expedition was over. This was now about survival. They had positioned themselves in just two and a half weeks to attempt to follow their teammates and film subjects Ali Satpara, his son Sajid, and John Snorri on their summit attempt of K2. 
By 11 p.m., they all turned off the radio to preserve the battery and submitted to the unforgiving winter night and accepted that they would not be able to know the outcome of their friend's expedition until the next day. They knew they were self-sufficient and knew they were the strongest and most qualified team on the mountain and entrusted the outcome to their vast experience, will, and determination. They had already been hit square on top of the head by a kamikaze rock that could have killed them and was apprehensive every step of the way down. The rock left a hole in his helmet, so he was incredibly cautious. It's difficult to know which rope to choose when descending K2 as there are so many old ropes. You need to be conscious and comfortable with the fact that should you make the wrong decision and the rope not hold your weight, you'll end up dead. It was a careful and calculated triple safety line descent for our narrator. When there was a doubt about the line, I'd clip the multiple ropes with one of my safety lines and rely on the rope we believed was the new one. I have to thank my friend and climbing partner, Pasang Kanji Shirpa, for helping me validate the integrity of each rope. Partway down the Black Pyramid, while repelling vertically and entrusting my life into the right safety line, a body flew directly over my head out of nowhere. There was no warning, there were no cries, there was no sound. Only the terrible sight of a human being enveloped in a bright red down suit flying right overhead. It was Atana Skatov. He flew just inches by Pasong Kanji's head as he was descending and right over mine. I watched for 5 to 10 seconds as he tumbled and flipped upside down multiple times, bouncing off the hard icy slopes of K2. My immediate thought was that his girlfriend, Shini, was at base camp, accompanying Atanas on his journey up the world's second tallest peak and would be shattered with this news, as would so many others. What had happened to Atanas was every climber's worst nightmare. At some point, Atanas' body was ejected from his down suit. He slid down the mountain to the base of K2 at ABC, and his down suit remained on the hill, wedged between the snow somewhere between Japanese Camp 3 and Camp 1. It's impossible to explain exactly what happened as no one witnessed the series of moves that Atanas made before he fell, but it's speculated that an error was made when switching lines. The moment you unclip your safety and entrust all your weight and life to the safety line with your repel device, you're relying on the fact that you haven't made an error because you will die if you have. K2 is steep and relentless. If you fall, you'll likely not stop until you hit the bottom of the mountain. I took a special interest in Atanas because of fellow Bulgarian climber Ivan Tomov who lost his life in 2019. I made two trips to Bulgaria to meet with Ivan's parents to tell Ivan's story and help them honor their son's life. Ironically, Ali Sadpara was the key witness to Ivan's last moments on Loach as he spent a night in a tent with Ivan before he died. I interviewed Ali about this right before his disappearance on K2. Sadly, another Bulgarian has lost his life, and the degree of separation for me is too far close to home. To dream means to be bold, courageous, fearless, sensible, and above all, to believe in yourself, Atanas once said. The difference between having a dream and to make the dream come true depends on the strength of your spirit the belief in yourself, how much you want to achieve the dream, and what effort you would invest to make it happen. This divine strength of spirit drives mankind to new horizons. Shinny Binish For our conclusion, Atana showed that no matter of age, it's never too late to take up mountaineering, rediscover oneself, or drastically alter one's lifestyle. And for all his mountaineering accolades, it is remarkable to remember that the person he was before this period, someone uninterested in exertion, athleticism, nor climbing. He was a shining example of a person who could take control of his life and follow his dreams. If you are passionate or have dedication and motivation about anything else, then you'll just imagine things, work hard, and your dreams can come true someday. Hey, make sure you please subscribe to our channel, leave a like and share our video if you like it, or if you want to hear more true stories from us.